Hi, welcome back to another video. Adductor stretches target the group of muscles on the inside of the thigh, including the groin. These muscles work to pull the thighs inward, hold you on the horse, and to stabilize the pelvis. Good groin and adductor flexibility can help to prevent lower back pain and allows for unrestricted, pain-free movement of the inner thigh and upper leg. I'm sharing with you in this video some of the best flexibility and strengthening routines for your inner thighs. If you like this video, please click the like button, please leave your comments below and share this video. Hit the notification bell so you won't miss any of my future weekly video release. Please also subscribe to this channel. So what are the adductors? The adductors are a group of muscles of the inner thighs. Groin and adductor injuries are common in sports that require flexibility in hip outward, that is abduction movements, such as hockey players. Many groin injuries develop because of poor tissue quality through this area. What tends to occur is that the adductors become fibrotic and develop trigger points and adhesions because they are weak or overworked. If this region is restricted, injury risk is much higher and the antagonists, that is the abductors, such as the glute medias, are unable to fire correctly. If your adductors are restricted, it is difficult to externally rotate at the hip, meaning that you produce less torque and do not recruit the correct muscles. This has a negative effect on the total force produced. Another reason why it is important to address this area is because tight adductors, together with tight hip flexors, usually due to prolonged sitting, can contribute to an anterior pelvic tilt, also known as lower cross syndrome, typified with hyperlordosis, and this is a common cause of lower back pain. Sports that benefit from the groin and adductor stretches include team sports like soccer, basketball, netball, rugby, and hockey, plus any sport that involves a lot of running or walking. Sports that require rapid change of direction like tennis, squash, badminton, and martial arts also benefit from regular groin and adductor stretching. Before we start, I want to share with you three safety tips. Firstly, do not hold your breath. Never push a stretch beyond the point of mild discomfort and be consistent. Stretching for a few minutes a couple of times a day will gradually build flexibility and range of motion over the long term. We're going to begin with the release of tight tissues by using self myofascial release techniques using either a foam roller or a trigger point ball. Begin on the floor with your inner thigh resting on the foam roller. Be sure to keep the leg relaxed. You want the roller to sink into the muscles. Slowly move back and forth over the roller. If you find a painful spot, stay on it for as long as it takes until the pain subsides. Then move on to another painful spot or trigger points. Now stand with your feet wide apart and your toes pointing diagonally outwards. Then bend your knees, lean forward, and use your hand to push your knees outward. Hold this stretch for about 20 to 30 seconds. For the wide leg adductor stretch, start by standing with your feet wide apart and your toes pointing forward, keeping your legs straight. Take a deep inhale as you exhale. Pivot forward from your hip, holding your elbows or touch the hands on the ground and stretch the legs wider apart. Hold this stretch for about 20 to 30 seconds and keep breathing as normal. From a seated position, bring your legs wide apart, up to a point where you feel a good stretch but can still hold a pose, maintaining a straight spine and without falling back. Flex your feet, press your legs and sitting bones down and lengthen up through your spine. Place your hands between your legs on the floor and hold this pose for 20 seconds. Begin on your hands and knees. Inhale as you slowly move your knees out to the side on your exhale. 
Continue opening up your hips as you turn your feet outwards to the sides. And flex your ankles so that your inner feet, inner ankles and your inner knees are touching the floor. Feel free to rock forward and backwards as you feel the stretch on your inner thighs. If you like, you can slowly lower down to your forearms to intensify the stretch. You can intensify the stretch further by performing this stretch against the wall. Begin in a standing position with a wide stance. The biggest mistake most people make with this stretch is not getting their feet wide enough. The key is to start with taking all the slack out of the adductors. This way, only a small movement is needed to generate a stretch. The other major area with this stretch is that as the adductors pull tight, they often pull the pelvis out of position. To prevent this, it is often helpful to hold a posterior pelvic tilt and abdominal brace during this stretch. Hold the stretch for a few seconds and then return to the starting position to release the stretch. Starting from a downward facing dog, bring one leg up to a three leg dog. Bring the leg forward outside the supporting hand on that side. If you have enough flexibility, get onto your elbows. You should feel a stretch along the inner side of your thigh. In addition to limiting hip abduction, tight adductors, especially the adductor magnus, can restrict hip flexion. When this is the case, adductor lunge stretch can be a great way to help restore this motion. With this lunge, you stretch out the adductors on one side while stretching out the hip flexors on the other side. To perform an active isolator stretching for the adductors, begin in a supine position with a resistance band on one foot. The other end of the strap is held in the hand. Now actively slide the foot outwards. The key is to slide the foot and don't lift it, or hip flexors will contract. At the end of the motion, gently pull the foot further outward with the strap. You should feel a stretch in the adductors and a contraction in the abductors. Hold for a couple of seconds and then repeat on the other side. Active isolated stretching utilizes the contraction of the opposing muscle groups in combination with passive assistance to achieve a deeper stretch. Once you have stretched out the adductors, you need to strengthen them. The simplest and easiest way is to perform the sideline adductor strengthening exercise. So you bend the top leg so the foot is firmly planted in front of the bottom leg. With a straight knee and toes flexed, lift and lower the bottom leg towards the roof. Perform 4 sets of 12 repetitions and then repeat the same exercise on the other side. The Copenhagen side plank takes the traditional side plank to a whole new level. It adds your adductors into the movement by placing your legs on the top and bottom of a bench. By raising the bottom leg up and down, your adductors are forced to fire. 
Now, your adductors connect to the pelvis, so if your adductors are weak, it is harder for your core muscles to keep your lower back and pelvis in the right position. Thank you for watching until the end. If you like this video, please click the like button. Please subscribe, share and comment. Please also hit the bell so that you will be notified of any new future video release. If you're interested in improving your health and fitness, and if you want to prevent lower back pain, please take a look at my book, which is now available from Amazon. Thank you.